just joined us. And he, well, Dara, what do you do? What do I do? Well, uh, at the moment, I like to call myself an entrepreneur, but for a while, I'd probably be known for like some of my YouTube videos of compilations of Gaelic football and hurling. And um, been doing that since probably around 2014, since I was younger. And then I kind of moved on to TikTok. And it's, you could say it's blown up since then, especially for someone who makes GA content. So, yeah, a bit of everything. But I have my own sports brand now. Mm, it's it's focus. quite it's a quite a cliche to th- say to, thing to say. But how have things been for you for the past few months? Yeah, I suppose for me, um, I don't know, like it's, it's been good. It's, it's, I know it's been an awful time and this, and I know everyone has their dark day, especially during the rough, the rough period, you know, during the pandemic. But for me, it's been, I suppose it's been a good time because I've, you know, been able to come out my own sports brand, uh, expand my social media. And this, I probably, this probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the pandemic. And um, because I just had so much free time and I just, I don't know came back to my YouTube roots and mm. uh, the GA as well. So, yeah, because yeah. you started in 2014 or you started years ago yeah, making yeah. clips, wasn't it? You're making GA clips and stuff like that. Yeah, so it kind of came about that I was, I kind of ran the social media from my like GA club back then. I was only 14, but I put videos yeah. together for in, in a county final or anything like that. And while I was editing it, I was like, why don't I just throw one up on YouTube, you know, like mm. a Gaelic football or hurling compilation? Because at the time there was nothing and if there was they weren't really great they're probably just like old or recordings or something like that of games yeah. but there was no actual compilations mm. uh, like the ones you'd see in like the likes of soccer and rugby you know your ronaldo's your messi's your neymar's mm. so i said I'd, I'd throw one together which was of course very badly edited uh, they still aren't greatly edited but i seem to you know get away with it because there just wasn't a market there or yeah i, I see that you're you're on another podcast and they started talking about this. And the guy was insistent that you had really bad editing. He was like, I, I watched your first videos. The editing was shit, man. It was shit. It was really, 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 really shit. But uh, yeah, you blew up. So uh, then you yeah. you grew like quite a big, you grew quite a big audience. I would say, you know, over that kind of like four year period, right? You, uh, what was yeah. the, what was the channel called? Well, it was just Star Kelly. Dark I've always Kelly. had it under my own name. Yeah, so um, it went. I don't know why. It yeah. went zero. Yeah. You know, went zero to sixty, and then in twenty eighteen, you decided to take a break. Yeah, so I took a break uh, for a multitude of reasons. Um, so one in early twenty eighteen, uh, one of my best friends passed away, and I just kind of needed to take a step back from everything. Um, I don't know. I kind of even took a break from Gaelic football myself. So I've been playing up until kind of underage, and I kind of took a break from adult football. Um, and also I think I turned 18 that year I was going into sixth year mm. there was just a, a couple of reasons and I'll be honest when you turn 18 and you're going into sixth year you can imagine it's it's quite a distraction <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's dangerous all right mm. so you uh, you take that break now actually what what I was thinking about did, did you take the break th- yeah did you take the break or did the break take you and before you slag me for that what I mean is, did you feel like, did you feel you had to take that, you know, did you feel any control in taking that break? Or was it just like, you know, everything's going to shit that this bad, these bad things have happened, fuck that. Or was it more of a, okay, I, I'm not going to do that for a while? No, I kind of feel like the break came to me. And to be honest with you, I just kind of, I don't know, fell out of love uh, or even just kind of lost my passion for editing. And like I said, I wasn't playing gay football as well. So I kind of, when you're not playing it, you're not, you're not surrounded by the mm. GA and that. So I kind of just took a, a step back, but it wasn't intentional. It just, it just came to happen. Mm. And yeah, like I said, two year break, but I think it's been good as well. Um, and yeah. I've definitely came back. I've, I've realized what I've missed. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Uh, no one compared. I'm not, it's, I'm not comparing this to like Logan Paul. Or <laughs> break, right? like this. But, it, but it has been good. It's the, it's the interesting thing, because if you think about it, what numbers were you at before you took that break? So, you know, 2018 before you take the break. Oh, 2018. So you're around, I think, 2016, 2017, I was just pumping out, like, GA mm-hmm. videos, like, hurling and football. So, I don't know, I think at the time, I put about six or 7,000 subscribers, which was which was huge for yeah, me back then. especially back then. And still is, still mm-hmm. is huge for a GA channel. And... I don't know. I feel like I was I was gaining more view. I got, I had a lot more people coming and watching my stuff. I wasn't really pushing for subscribers. Like people would just look up my videos. It, mm. it mainly came from suggested. Yeah. Uh, on the YouTube like sidebar. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you you take that break and then eventually you decide to come back. Why? 
Um, well, first of all, uh, just before the pandemic, so the start of the year, I actually got a job working in Crow Park in the GAA. And um, so, you know, like again, you're surrounded by the GAA, mm. your interest comes back. Like I always had an interest in GA, but I was like, yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm, I've really, really strong interest in it again. And then the pandemic hits. I'm thinking, you know, I'm not working. Um, college, it's, it's all online. Even then, it's, it's, you know, I have a lot of free time. And um, so I think, I don't know if someone could have suggested or I even told myself, I was like, you know, I'm going to go back and make a few videos and see how they go. Um, and so luckily, they went pretty good. Much, you know, yeah, like, I, I, you know, I was like either thinking, you know, these are just going to flop because I mm. haven't uploaded in so long or, you know, the people who've watched me are just going to keep watching them again. And, you know, luckily enough, I came back and the sport was still there. So I'm very grateful for that. What was the what was the move to TikTok like? Was it YouTube first, and then you thought, "Hey, TikTok, there's some potential there," or what was that? What was the plan for the resurgence of Dara Kelly? Yeah, so it it always been YouTube, and then of course this TikTok app came around. I'd never really heard of it before, and I had the app installed itself kind of before I made an account and started uploading. So I was just scanning it, seeing seeing what's it all about, you know. Um, was a bit skeptical about it, you know. Yeah, especially the in the early stuff. days, it was just really, it was a wasteland of just weirdos. And then progressively, yeah. it got normal and normal. And even I found it myself, you know, you'd, you'd go on every like three or four days and you check up and then it'd be every two days and then it was every day. And now it's, you know, all the time. Yeah, literally, like it was just at the start, of course, it was all these dancing videos, but then it became, you know, a lot more mainstream and mm. um, you're seeing um, like a lot of different stuff like you'd see on YouTube, but just like in shorter content. Mm. So I think I could have like, again, it was probably something similar to the YouTube. I've seen a gap where there was people uploading edits of uh, different sports um, and I said, OK, well, you know what? I'm going to give uh, the GAA uh, TikToks a shape because. GAA is a sport that not a lot of people around the world know about. And if you know the TikTok algorithm, it's so easy. Um, to get on the For You page in other countries or just blow up from a random mm. kind of video. So yeah, that's kind of how it came about. Um, and yeah, so, it go for it. okay, so you start to gain some momentum again, things are going well. Then you decide to launch DK Sports. To launch a company, especially during March and April and all that time is really interesting. Why, why did you do it? Yeah, well, I think I launched, I launched DK Sports kind of later on after kind of building up a following okay. once again and becoming familiar uh putting out content and um, so i think i'd been uploading on tiktok and youtube for a few months then and then you know i decided i wanted to launch my own sports brand something i've been wanting to do for quite a while and um, actually going back i think in 2014 2015 and um, in my early days i'd actually plans to bring out my own like pair of gaelic gloves or my own brand and um, so kind of like i said once again uh lockdown probably was a blessing for me and that i had time and yeah i decided to go for it and it's it's been amazing ever since like i didn't expect it to do as well as it has been now do you have a team or what's the what's the back end like to dk sports yeah well i kind of look after everything myself i'm registered as a sole trader but like i've had um an old friend from school who went to school with, who's kind of like a whiz kid and in terms of like seo so search engine mm -hmm. like optimization you know building websites all the e-commerce stuff which I had like a sort of a background in, but he definitely helped me. And um, he helped me put together the website and uh, taught me quite a lot. He still works with me, of course. And I've, I've hired them, um, you know, local graphic designers as well. So always supporting local. <laughs> um, and they've helped me out with the designs for gloves and other cool stuff like that. But, what, yeah. was, what was that first sale like? Because I'll tell you, in maybe 2017, 2016, I got the clothing company bug and I went onto Fiverr and I must have paid like 20 euro to different designers. And I went onto Shopify and I had everything set up. And my big thing was that I was going to capitalize on Halloween. Nobody sold anything to do with Halloween was my thought. I only got one sale. It was from my dad and he later requested a return. What was that first sale like? You build it up and then, you know, you wait for them yeah. to come. Yeah, I'd, I'd kind of, um, my plan was, I had a plan and that was obviously before I bring out any product, they have to be, you know, of the highest quality. Well, for me anyway. And um, so I'd, I'd, you know, I'd let my local, my mates and my local club mates test out all the gloves and, mm. uh, you know, get some feedback, you know, see if they're ready to be released. And um, just all that kind of, you know, uh, product research and everything like that. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I sent them out to, I think, a few TikTokers and uh, <laughs> yeah, TikToker marketing. Mm. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually checked the yeah. post before I came on here and there was 
So there's nothing there, Dara. That's all I'm, you know, that's all I'm saying. You know, my, you can see my bare hands right now, Dara. That's, that's all we're saying. Hey, you go back to, so that first sale, what was the first sale like? Yeah, it was, I don't even, I don't remember it. Like the only, yeah, it, I was can't it even a, remember. Was it an influx? Like it's just, it's all been a whirlwind. Was it, um, was it a quick, well, yeah, it, was, it was like 50 people buying them or something like that. Yeah, I think they, like, like I, I had a launch date for the 1st of September. And um, so that was kind of plastered all over my social medias. And yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I sold it pretty quickly in the first launch. I didn't have that much stock because like I said, I was, this is my first kind of business or kind of launching anything mm. like that, launching any product, my own brand. And I didn't, didn't know how it would do. So I had low stock and it, it, like I said, it got really good reception and sold out. And uh, yeah, I also had brand ambassadors as on board as, as well as the, you know, the influential TikTokers, mm. which, which helped with the launch. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's what's the future do you see an international market because i was thinking about this ga is growing but it's not necessarily you know football or uh, nfl or anything the, the market is still a little smaller what's the what's the future plans for dk sports yeah i've said from the outright to my followers and you know anyone i've talked to about my brand it's i want to be bigger than just the ga i know at the moment and it's just based on you know i've magnetic football gloves mm -hmm. and you know, a few face masks. And <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to be bringing out, you know, uh, sportswear which can be used for multiple sports. Mm. So kind of running gear, gym gear, stuff you can wear every day. And mm. um, of course, you know, I'm not going to forget like the roots where I came from, which was of course the GA, and I'll continue to make GA gear. You know, mm. hopefully looking to branch into half zips and jerseys. But uh, no, I kind of want it to be. Uh, I'm trying to compare it to like an Under Armour Nike. Of course, mm. I don't think I ever reached that scale, but that's the type of like kind a gym of gear shark, I suppose, would be the latest example of that kind of ascension, right? Yeah, Ben Francis is mm. a huge inspiration to me. Like I've, you know, I've paid great detail to his journey with Jim Shark. Um, obviously, I want to be, you know, I, I, I have, I disagree with certain aspects of his company. And um, I see he's even changed direction uh, recently. You know, trying to cater to all audiences. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, he's kind of gone into Jim Shark now. He's trying to branch out, but I want to branch out from the start. So, like I said, hopefully, you know, we bring out sportswear for mm. kind of all activities. You said you're an entrepreneur and that DK Sports was what you're doing for now. Is there, I mean, anybody with a brain usually has other plans. Is there, is there anything else you don't have to tell us, but is there any other things you see in the, you know, on the horizon over the next five years? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think streetwear and clothing is also like a, like a huge interest I have and it's definitely somewhere, something I want to go into, but I think with that, um, it might take a little bit longer. Um, especially considering, you know, my audience has kind of been from the GAA and sports side. So bringing out something like that, mm. uh, well, I think, you know, with my, what I'm what I'm thinking of is, you know, I'm going to have to build my reputation with DK Sports and then maybe launch something else in, in the near future. Mm. So, yeah, but uh, working, hopefully, hopefully something like clothing as well. Mm. And that's the plan. And you're still in college, correct? I am indeed, yeah. Yeah, I'm so second, yeah. what do you think your teachers, uh, I guess, tutors, whatever the called what, what do you think they think of this presumably you're like a shining example of young business people yeah um well like yeah i'm studying business through irish at the moment so it kind of goes hand in hand mm. while i'm doing uh, it's, it's very helpful but yeah i think one or two of my tutors know and uh, know um and yeah like the really supportive it's it's great you know um, did you say I've, true I've irish started... yeah true, true irish. I... So, so so you you have a big love for the irish language or it's easy points. Um, a bit of both. A bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mixture of both. And um, like, I went to Wales school for a primary school, so an all Irish primary okay, school. Yeah. Secondary school, I just went to you know your, your typical community school, and then mm. um, yeah, I said, I've always been you know not to blow my own uh, horn or trumpet. Mm. Um, I've I've always you know had an interest in Irish and been decent at it. So I wanted to do business through Irish because I felt like. It could probably bring more opportunities as just mm. you know just doing your normal business studies course in college so yeah yeah now this is kind of broader but what do you see as the future perhaps of the gaa i mean if you make clips of them for five years or four years you have to have some thoughts i tuned in recently to the i'm not a big gaa guy but i tuned in to i think it was the i think it was the final and the commentary team i just thought were woeful uh I, you know you, you missed the joe brawleys and all those people what do you see? I've even thought why there, why wasn't there a match of the day? You know when um, all the all the local clubs started Facebook living. 
there, someone should have come along and just taken all of those clips together and produced a show. What do you is do you have any thoughts on the future of the GAA? Yeah, a hundred percent agree with you on that term. Uh, although you cannot put down Marky Marcy, Marky Marcy's the goal. I just want to clarify that. <laughs> In case people get in your back, we can't we can't be down Marky Marcy. Uh, but yeah, no, Joe Broly's great as well. But yeah, hundred percent agree. Like I still think the GAA in terms as much as it's great or amateur organization, and um, it's still I think very, very traditional in the sense of like you said, their media and that. Like I'd love to see something in similar to the likes of Soccer AM, mm. you know, kind of something more new age. Um, like I'm sure there's like something you could even introduce some way the two Johnnies come in. I don't know. Yeah. Or <laughs> well, I, I think know, any money in the more GAA. Stories can you imagine? Yeah, so, any money in the GAA. Both of those groups are currently hoovering it up. I think we might need to expand a little bit, but certainly, uh, so actually, I think the two, you're right. I think the two Johnnies were doing like a, a piece, you know, at, at some point. So that's thanks, Dara, for coming on the show.